Welcome to the Closing Act YouTube channel. Join me, Christine Blanchette, for in-depth interviews of musicians, songwriters, producers, and more. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe to our channel. your heart now you don't know what just hit you your whole world's in a spin you'll do the day you heard my name at the Rio Theater in Vancouver, and my special guest is Sue Foley. She is a multi-award winning blues guitarist and singer, and she's here today to talk about performing here and her latest album and what is next for Sue. Welcome. Thank you. Oh my goodness, how does yeah. it feel to be here? It feels amazing. I mean, we started out in Vancouver. Not everybody knows that, but um, I mean, I'm from Ottawa, but I formed my first band in Vancouver. I moved to Vancouver when I was 18 yes. and out of the gate, um, right out of high school and then formed my first band here. And so it's just a very special place for us. Yeah. Yes. And your love of uh, blues was when you were 15. Is that right? Yeah. Yes. So what made you want to do blues? Um, it just kind of got inside my soul. Mm. I think it's just a powerful music. And I saw my first live blues show when I was 15. And at yes. that time, there was a lot of, a lot of blues acts on the circuit. Um, a lot of these legends have passed away since then. But we were really lucky to have seen so many great artists. And I think it just gets inside you. You can't really yes. get it out, yes. basically.
So tell us about your performing tonight. What songs you'll be performing? Well, we have a new album called Pinky's Blues that's mm -hmm. doing really well. We just got our Juno nomination, and we've got Blues Music Awards nominations in Memphis and uh, Maple Blues Awards. So it's doing really well. We've been running, you know, on a roll with this album. So mostly the focus is the new album, and then I pepper it with some older, a few older things, some acoustic things. But basically what I do is a, a pretty strident guitar, electric guitar show. Yes. Yeah. Yes, and it's been number one uh, for 12 consecutive weeks, is yeah, that right? Yeah, yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, goodness. And also, I understand you have the most record for the Blues, um, Maple Blues Awards. Yes. 18 of them. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, how does that make you feel? Like, you've got three nominations, right? Yeah. And for, for Pinky's Blues, so yeah. the the album of the year, year, I should say, and the others for the artists yourself. And, yeah. yeah, it feels great. I mean, the, what's nice about some of these awards is they're sort of by popular vote, and it is the fan base kind of thing. So I think if the fans are loving what we do, it's great. Mm -hmm. You know, we just, it and, makes us feel good. Yes, yeah. and it's coming up, eh? 43rd annual Blues Music Awards. Yeah, that's May. coming out in so, May. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so tell us the inspiration behind Pinky's Blues. Uh, it was we um, we made an album uh, sort of dedicated to our Texas heroes of blues, and the album was recorded in Austin. It uh, it was recorded live off the floor, which. When you say live off the floor, it means there's no overdubs. It's it's a modern recording. It's in the studio, but we were not tracking it. We were playing. Everybody's playing in the moment live, and I think you really hear that in the in the in the music. So what we wanted to do was make sort of a spontaneous record that you know um, harken back to the music that we grew up on and love. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there's Dallas Man. Yeah. And so and there's California Man, Pinky's Blues. So is there a favorite song that, or is there all in special? And I'm really happy with the whole record and uh, everybody's performances were so great. Um, but I love a song called Say It's Not So. It's written mm. by a friend of mine named Angela Straley and it's just a slow blues, but it, it just has a vibe to it. And it's probably one of my favorite tracks because when we were recording it, uh, the band hadn't heard the song before. They didn't know we were doing it. And we really were in the moment learning it as we were playing it. So you really kind of hear the spontaneity and everybody's listening and vibing. So I just that song just kind of hit something. Yes. Mm -hmm. And Sue, how would you describe your music, your album? I would describe it as uh, Texas-based, mm -hmm. Texas-based blues. Even though I'm a Canadian, I've kind of was raised uh, musically in Texas. I moved to Texas in 1990 and um, have been I'm kind of known as a Texas blues artist at this moment. Uh, but also as a Canadian blues artist, I kind of cross both things. But it's it's high energy. It's uh, got a lot of emotion. It's pure. It's uh, straightforward and honest. Yes. Yeah. And, and what do you want people to take away from your music? I want people to know who I am. Like, if they come to a Sue Foley show, I want them to know or feel like they know who I am and, and, and that my music is honest and it represents something real. Mm. Yeah. And it also, I think, part of our journey is also to tip a hat and tribute all the heroes of ours and, and always let people know that part of our journey as musicians, as blues artists, is we give back to the legends that kind of raised us up or turned us on and so we always tip our hat to them and let people know that we didn't create this music. Uh, mm. This music came from somewhere else but we are honoring it and we are honoring the people that, that came and went and who created it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So tell us, the audience, some of your highlights. Some of my highlights? Well, um, right now just being on the road, being yes. able to tour, being back with my band. Um, back in my band right now is my original bass player, John Penner, who we formed the F Sue Foley Band here in Vancouver. Yes. So yes. he's back in the band, and, he, and we were apart for about 20 years. We were together about 10, the first 10 years of our career. So that's a real highlight, working with him, um, being on the road. 
um, being able to play with people like Jimmy Vaughn and Billy Gibbons, mm -hmm. like we do that in Austin, and uh, just getting to, to meet the fans. Yeah. And yeah. you opened for Eric Clapton, too, right? I There's sat in with Jimmy Vaughn opening for Eric Clapton, oh, yeah. Oh, goodness. So, yeah. How exciting is that? Yeah. I want to know about your guitars. You have the, the Jimmy, the Pinky, yes. and Billy, Yeah, right? so <laughs> Pinky's Blues is about my first guitar, Pinky. Um, and that guitar I also bought in Vancouver, mm. um, the original Pinky. And she's pretty beat up. I've had her for over 30 years, and she's... Pretty beat up, but she's been on all my albums. She's been on tour with me for almost the entire time. And I, I just recently got a couple more new pinkies because this one is a little precious and I don't fly with her. So I have two <laughs> new pink Paisley Telecasters. One's called the Jimmy because Jimmy Vaughn gave it to me. And one's called the Billy because Billy gave it to me, Billy Gibbons. So, yes. yeah. So those yeah. are the two I have with me. It's like part of your of who you are it goes with you everywhere yes <laughs> and people like the pink guitar they come to a Sue Foley show they you know they like that whole vibe and that, but that's really who I am and that's the same guitar I played yeah. so I'm doing a little work on my uh, pinky pinky two here this uh, guitar was gifted to me by Jimmy Vaughn and <clears throat> because I've been using the same guitar for so long that he thought maybe I needed a new one, which was really sweet. And he gave this to me about a year and a half ago. So I've been still working with it, getting it to where I like it. Because you know, with a new guitar, I've had the same guitar for 30, over 30 years. So I don't switch guitars very much. So I'm trying to make it my own. And one of the first things I did was change out the knobs because I've been working, um, had these knobs, uh, I have a Strat knob for the tone knob. And what that does for me is when I'm playing and I'm looking at, you know, I'm, I don't have to look, I just kind of know where everything is. And it's great for, you know, when you want to do volume or tone kind of things with your pinky. So um, anyway, that's why I have those. So I switched out the knob. And the thing I did with the I call this one the Jimmy or the Pinky 2 because um, I also have another one that was gifted to me from Billy so uh, that's called the Billy and I set them up uh, different so this one has the Tex-Mex pickups on it um, that is the same pickups Jimmy uses on his Strat um, so these are the Tele model Tex-Mex I think they're made in Mexico and they just have a really good meaty sound and what I'm doing is I'm sanding all the finish off the neck. This is I did this on my pinky one when I first got it, so over 30 years ago. And I don't like I don't like the finish on these necks. I don't like the stickiness of the finish, so I just take it all off, front and back. So that's what I'm doing today. I'm just sort of I had some of it sanded off, but they kind of left a bit of a film, so I'm just taking off the rest of it. And then it just takes a few years, really, for the thing to get worked in. So I'm looking forward to using the Jimmy when we start touring again. Because um, Pinky, number one, is a little old and precious. And I started to get worried bringing her on airplanes and stuff. Uh, and just the risk of losing her. So I just use her for local gigs and studio. And then when we start touring, look for the Jimmy. And I'll talk about the Billy next. Um, but yeah, that's what I'm doing today. I'm just uh, sanding down the neck uh, and I'll be uh, raising the action a bit more. I keep 10s on there. I generally use the Dario 10 to 46, but I'm actually considering doing flat wounds on this to be more of a, a Jimmy sort of sound because that's what he uses. So stay tuned for more of that. Keep you in the loop. Yes, and mm -hmm. so do you prefer performing in front of large audiences or small? Or I don't really, it doesn't matter actually. Uh, we love to play. Uh, mm -hmm. We have to play. We have to play live. Uh, it's a very life or death to a lot of musicians, but yes. to, to touring blues musicians, this is what we do. We play live. We play in all kinds of venues. I, if I had my brothers, probably a club. Mm -hmm. A nightclub is my very favorite place to play because I just like the vibe of clubs and I like 
uh, the intimacy of them. But we play in festivals and theaters and yes. all kinds of things, yeah. And speaking of performing, where are you going next? You have a full venue. <laughs> we do. We have a pretty stacked schedule. We're going to finish out here in the West Coast this week, and then we go um, back to Texas to do South by Southwest in Austin, and then we head it up to the Northeast to do New York and Boston and Toronto oh. and... Um, it runs through there, then we go to Alberta, and then we catch up with ZZ Top for a few dates in Alberta, then we come back to the Memphis uh, Music in May Festival and do the Blues Music Awards, and then we go to Europe, and then wow. it's just re rinse and repeat after that. <laughs> no, and you're also a writer, yes. too. I mm -hmm. mean, you have a book, from my understanding, and also you write about other blues guitarists like you. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, in, in 2001 I started interviewing other women guitar players mm. because as a, as a female guitar player I've always felt like I was a little different, um, a little unique, and so I've always kept track of other female players all my whole mm. career, and now there's a lot more than there ever was, which is great. Um, but I did a series of interviews for about 10 years, and I've been working on a book to get that, uh, that together, but I've I was just curious about the journey and, yes. and uh, other women's experiences. And, yeah. yeah, so you are a role model for others. And so what, what keeps you going? Like what drives you? I, I like work. I really like my yes. work. I just love what I do and I'm curious. And I'm, I have a fair bit of restlessness um, just generally in life. I've always been kind of a restless uh, uh, sort of, I guess, creative, restless, impulsive type. So I like to do a lot of things and I like to be busy and work. Mm -hmm. I, I just like to work, basically. But I mean, I love, obviously, friendships and yes. casual nights with the girls and all the things everybody likes yes. and vacations. But I really love my work. Yeah. Yes, and have that balance too, yeah. right? And, but also you have the, uh, the other album, The Ice Queen. Yeah. Can you tell us about that? Well, The Ice Queen is, um, was our last album. Yes. Yeah. And before Pinky's Blues, that came out in 2018, and that did really well for us. And uh, that was also recorded in Austin. And it was pr same producer, Mike Flanagan, produced it. Um, a lot of the same people played on it. But that was sort of my return to Austin, that album. And mm. uh, The Ice Queen represented a little bit of my Canadian yes. heritage, because uh, I'm from Ottawa. And yeah. Yes. And so what is next for you? What's next is just touring right now. Yes. Yeah, we're going to focus on this, touring the album. We'll get back in the studio before the end of the year and make another album. And uh, maybe an acoustic album. I really love oh, playing wow. acoustic. Um, and I'm working on the book, and that's, oh. you know... It's yeah. wonderful. And, you know, people want to listen to your music or, you know, support you. Where can they go? They just go to my website, suefoley.com. Yes. www.sufoley.com. And is there anything else you'd like to add? No, I'm just, thanks for having me, and I'm just stoked to be back in Vancouver. Well, welcome back, Sue. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. You know, you know that, that young lady <laughs> was on the show before I came out here. Yeah. Sue Foley. Yeah. And gee, mine, I don't know if she liked this or not, but I'm going to try to get her back out here. Oh, yeah. Yeah.
nose, my nose is in the sand. Let me not got to quit. Uh, my background, uh, st- well, professionally, it, uh, you don't want to hear about sailing. You want to hear about my professional background. Uh, I started, uh, my first serious job was at a, as a news reporter uh, for CBC. I got a job with CBC Television News. And I worked in Newfoundland and I worked in the prairies in Saskatoon. And then I made my way to Halifax, which is where my people are from. I'm originally I was born in Nova Scotia. The Closing Act is sponsored by Craft Academy Salon, Mallory's Fashion Network, and the BC Sports Hall of Fame. Three, I ran away and joined the circus.